हेलो एवरी वन वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू टीचिंग पाठशाला एंड इट्स मी योर एजुकेटर ज्योति सो टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग रिगार्डिंग द कॉम्प्लीमेंट प्रोटीन और कॉम्प्लीमेंट सिस्टम ओके सो दिस विल बी वन ऑफ द न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज फ्रॉम इम्यूनोलॉजी सब्जेक्ट सो वी आर स्टार्टिंग अवर डिस्कशन विथ कॉम्प्लीमेंट प्रोटीन्स एंड वन बाय वन आई विल बी अपलोडिंग अपलोडिंग ऑल द थ्री पाथवे फ्रॉम द complement proteins okay so in today's video i will be dealing with all the basics as well as the introductory portion of complement proteins so let's start okay so first of all if we talk about the complement protein so obviously as the name suggest it is a type of a protein that is involved in a immune response and the word itself is indicating the meaning right that is the complement okay complement means that is uh, some kind of like enhancement so if i talk about the complement protein so they are mainly what they are mainly the soluble serum protein okay that is the soluble serum protein sometime we used to call it as a glycoprotein also okay so you can call it a call it as a serum protein or serum glycoprotein okay so this is a nature right if we like if someone is talking about the complement protein so first of all we should be knowing that what is the nature that its nature is it is a serum protein now if we talk about the like the production side so it is mainly produced by what like it is produced by that is a uh, produced by hepatocytes that is the liver cells okay it is mainly produced by hepatocytes also it contain a different of like different series of protein and there is a existence of like more than 20 proteins you can say okay there is a presence of more than 20 complement proteins which are helping in the overall immune response they mainly used to circulate in blood as well as the different tissue and if we talk talk about the like a further nature so it is mainly the heat labile protein and sometime it used to cause like it used to do its maximum action by what by killing the bacteria by killing the bacteria and opsonization so these two pathway are very much famous regarding the complement protein initially these proteins when they used to circulate in body they are mainly in a inactive form okay in a inactive form when when there is a absence okay let let uh, make it as a minus ag that is in the absence of antigen they are mainly inactive but whenever there is a presence of like uh, antigen okay in the presence of antigen they used to behave as a active molecule not only this after activating itself it can cleave the other complement protein okay it can cleave the other complement protein and hence in this way there is a cascade okay there is a cascade of complement protein activation and hence the immune response will be seen in the body which has been attacked by antigen in fact this inactive form uh, can be named as that is the zymogen or sometime we used to call it as a pro enzyme okay if we talk about the activation fine if we talk about the activation so the complement activation it mainly going to follow two pathway first is the antibody dependent pathway ab dependent and second one be second one will be ab independent that is the antibody independent that means in a antibody dependent pathway the complement protein get activated after the involvement of antibodies whereas in case of a antibody independent there is a no involvement of antibody in the whole activation if i talk about the complement protein involvement so there are the series of complement protein that is starting from c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 c6 c7 C8 and C9. So uh, from C1 to C9, there is a presence of complement protein, which will be helping in eradication of or the removal of foreign antigen. Okay, now let's talk about the complement protein action. Okay, 
so like i'm explaining that in the form of a flow diagram so that will be better i guess to understand so if you are talking about the complement protein complement protein so it is mainly consist of that is two subunit okay it is having a two subunit now let's see what are the different names are there so one subunit is named as that is the regulatory subunit okay first is the regulatory subunit and the second one is the catalytic subunit the main property of regulatory subunit is that it used to regulate the whole pathway and mainly it is consist of a small subunit okay that is a small subunit and if we talk about the catalytic subunit it is consist of the larger subunit okay there will be a larger subunit so first of all we have to understand that how they used to cleave itself right so suppose this is a complement protein suppose c is a complement protein so after cleaving itself it will be divided into c a and c b okay so like if we consider in this way so this is a complement protein it is having a a subunit and b subunit a subunit will be maximum time a subunit will be small it will be small and in case of b subunit it will be the larger subunit okay so whenever there is a cleavage of complement it will be like cleaving itself into a ca and cb just for example let's consider we are talking about the that is the c3 complement protein so it will be cleaving itself in the manner like that is the c3a and c Three B C three A will be small as indicated above, and C three B will be larger subunit. Okay, so in this way they are going to cleave itself. That is in a small subunit and in a large subunit. So always remember that is in a maximum cases we are going to see that small subunit is designated as A, and the largest subunit will be designated as B. Okay. so remember one thing that whenever there is a combination combination in the sense like if a and b subunit are in combination that means there will be no action okay there will be no action of complement because their com combination form that is a, this form is a inactive form okay this is a inactive form but whenever there is a cleavage like a plus b it has been cleaved into that is a a part will be separated from b part now they will be in a action and they are going to help in the overall complement pathway so the separation is merged that is the a will be the smaller subunit and b will be the larger subunit so the separation is must if you want to make any complement protein to work work in a proper way so remember one thing the regulatory subunit will be there and a catalytic subunit will be there in case of a complement protein fine now let's talk about the exception cases like we have already discussed that there is a ex uh, like existence of c1 to c9 right the complement protein are starting from c1 and it is ending till c9 so like uh, like c1 to c9 there is a, obviously there is a presence of c2 also so maximum of the complement protein whenever they are going to cleave itself it is going to divide into that is the ca which will be a smaller subunit smaller subunit and the next portion or next subunit will be the cb which will be the larger subunit okay this is going to applied for overall that is whatever the complement protein are existing it is going to apply for all complement protein okay for all complement protein for all complement protein but in case of in case of c2 there is a exceptional case what is that suppose c2 is getting cleave at that time again there will be a generation of what that is the c2a and c2b sorry c2b but here the a subunit will be regarded as a larger subunit okay larger subunit and the b subunit will be regarded as a smaller subunit this is the only difference and similarly the smaller subunit will be what the smaller subunit as i informed you earlier the smaller subunit is, it is going to work in a regulatory basis okay regulatory basis and the larger subunit it will be work on the basis of a catalytic subunit 
so remember one thing smaller subunit will always work like in accordance to the regulatory subunit and the larger subunit will always participate in a catalytic functioning so the exception is that always a is regarded as a small subunit but in case of a c2 a will be regarded as a larger subunit and b will be regarded as a smaller subunit so in this way we have done like we are done with all the basics so if we want to reframe the whole definition of complement protein or complement system you can say so we can say that the complement system it is a part of immune system that enhance or we can say that it uh, that complement the ability of a antibody and different phagocytic cell to clear the microbes from the body so we can say that whenever there is an attack of any antigen in the in our body at that time the complement protein it used to enhance the activity of our immune cells okay it is just that it is going to complement our immune system so that it could perform in a best way whenever there is an attack of any foreign pathogen now let's uh, let's discuss few of the function of complement protein first like first uh, function we can assume that it used to help in the phagocytosis okay it used to help in the phagocytosis mainly by what mainly by opsonizing the antigen what is the meaning of opsonization opsonization means make, making any antigen like uh, you know making it in the form like it will be it will seems more tastier to the immune cells okay so that is what the opsonization of antigen so in this case mainly the that is the C3B, it used to work in the best way for opsonizing activity or for opsonizing any kind of a antigen. So, so, the first function is the phagocytosis, second function is the inflammation. Okay, it will be helping in a inflammation. And how it is going to work? It will be attracting that is the macrophages as well as the neutrophiles neutrophiles and hence it will be enhancing the inflammation that is the first line of defense the third third function is the membrane attack complex okay membrane attack this is the third function so in this way what a uh, complement protein is going to do it is going to rupture the cell wall of bacteria okay there will be the rupture of rupture of bacterial cell wall so that it will get disturbed and hence the bacteria will get eliminated from the body so in this way we have seen total three functioning of complement proteins first is the phagocytosis second is the inflammation and third is the membrane attack in our next video i will be telling you the total three pathway of complement proteins or we can say that the different a complement system and, and we will be talking about that one by one in my upcoming video.